I'd like to dedicate this video to Nick Duguid and the rest of the Star Trek Online environment team. Tumor Boy, welcome to this weirdness that I keep insisting on doing. That's right, folks, it is Smasher Past Ground Maps Edition. Andoria, uh, uh, pass. It, it's a big, empty winter wasteland, and uh, frankly, I, not gonna lie, I don't think this map was ever actually completed, because, I mean, this was supposed to be like a PvP ground area where you could do, like, challenge uh, other, uh, where you can challenge other players to, like, you know, the Yushan Tor kind of thing, and that never happened. <laughs> yeah, definitely a, definitely a pass on this one. Bajor smash. I mean, this is every Deep Space Nine fan's dream. You can go down to Bajor, explore around a city around there, and this is this is a really well detailed map that has held up really well over the years. Definitely a smash. Mmm, Defira. This is the invasion zone specifically. Honestly, pass. Because I mean it's an impressive map in terms of its size and what you can do there, but at the same time, there's so many like low poly textures from like early early days of the game. I mean, heck. Look at this runabout. Look at this runabout. We've seen what runabouts can look like on the ground these days. That thing is just ancient. Oh, and uh, look, you know, first off, we got the uh, the old Borg textures just like encompassing this building or whatever. But also, I noticed something about these roofs on these uh, buildings, which I guess are like Teferi houses or whatever. The roofs are using like an old star map texture. I, I never noticed that until until I took this screenshot. I thought that was kind of funny, but yeah. Defiri, it's or Defira, it's an interesting place, but pass. Mm, the Defiant Bridge. I really want to say Smash on this one, but this is another one that's really showing its age, just because of how early it was introduced into the game. I mean, for one, the map is it's too big. I mean, the Defiance Bridge was never this big. And I know they have to kind of scale things up for the sake of it being a video game, but I still feel like this one's a bit too big. And yeah, it's just it's. If this, were, if this map were made like today, this would look so much better. But as it is right now, it's a little aged. I mean, look at this chair. Look how low poly this chair is. Yeah, it's uh, I guess I want it to be a smash, but it's going to be a pass. Though it does get points because this map is actually a full uh, a full uh, starship interior. It's not just the bridge. You can actually get the full defiant interior. Delta Quadrant Command. Ooh. <laughs> this is, I mean, the, I, this is kind of true with all of these Dyson maps. They, they're, they're interesting looking, but they, they didn't really age that well with lighting 2.0. They just look very drab and gray. And honestly, it looks like a fog has rolled in on this one in particular. Pass, but I feel like this, there's, this could be touched up. I, th I think. Though I say that knowing literally nothing about environment design, <laughs> so don't take my word for it. The the, uh, the fleet dilithium mine. Honestly, this one's going to be a smash because I I always thought this one was really cool. It's a very immersive environment. You really because this is supposed to be like a uh, what is it uh, a Riemann mining station for dilithium and this just all feels very Riemann. It's very dark, which you expect for the Riemanns, but it's not like overly dark because you got these like pillars of light all over the place, which are they're like some sort of like anti grav dilithium conveyors. I always thought that was kind of cool. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's a cool map. Yeah, I like it. Smash. Plus, it's actually bigger than it looks because you can go outside and you can mine dilithium outside. And yeah, it's, it's a really, like, well fleshed out area. Yeah. Like, there's a cave, like, somewhere in here, too, where it's, like, full of dilithium. Yeah, this is a cool area. Smash. Discovery Bridge. This is, I mean, for one, Smash because I mean it's gorgeous. This is because this is a map that was made, you know, within recent years. So this is when you know very much a an area that is like up to current standards, your current standards of the game. And frankly, the environment it just looks fantastic. You you're on here and you really just feel like you're on the bridge of the discovery. Smash. Hmm. The Drenor Colony. This is this is definitely a smash. I love this area too. It's it's very bright. It's very colorful. It's very. You, it feels like a colony that you'd want to like hang out on for a while. It's just it's a really cool environment. And you got this uh, this building area over here where you know, there's a bunch of stuff inside. Uh, you can actually go inside a lot of these rooms too because a lot of this this same map was used for uh, an episode, a couple episodes I think. Uh, 
in the storyline so you can actually like go around and explore in some of this stuff and this is really good cool. you can go explore like the whole island too just because it's also used in the um the invasion simulations and um that one ground tfo the zinkathy invasion tfo i forget the name of it but yeah this is this is a great map. Plus, I, honestly, I don't know why, but I love just like sitting there and like watching the shuttles take off and land. I don't know why that amuses me, but it does. Yeah, smash. Ooh, Drazana. This is very old area of Star Trek Online. And I was, I've never been that fond of Drazana. I mean, it's it's so drab and just, ugh, looking. Everything look. I, Every time I go to Drazana, I feel like every I it just gives me the vibe that every service is probably kind of sticky. That's that's just the vibe I get from Drazana. Deep Space Nine, this definite smash because it's Deep Space Nine. Not just because it's Deep Space Nine, but look how gorgeous this area is. This was recreated with painstaking uh, detail and love, and uh, I love it so much. In fact, uh, this was uh, released, uh, when was it? Around uh, uh, Victory's Life, that, uh, that expansion. It was released sometime around there and, uh, for that expansion, and yeah, I remember them talking about how they were remastering the Promenade, which you can see even more of in some of these other pictures. But I remember they were talking about remastering the Promenade, and they weren't sure if they were going to get Ops uh done too because none of the story content took place on ops and it was, it was just like oh it would have been a bummer if it didn't happen but it did happen because nick dugood is a bamf tumor boy oh you're a legend for just this alone let alone everything else <laughs> yeah deep space nine this is just a gorgeous area this is one of my favorite places to hang out in in star trek online just this is like the place I like to be, like my home base in Star Trek Online. The only thing it's missing is a veteran dilithium refiner, and then this place would be absolutely perfect. Yeah, D Space Nine, definite smash. <laughs> Speaking of definite smashes, the Enterprise F's bridge, specifically the revamped one that appeared recently in Star Trek Online, and uh, yeah. D definite smash. I, I love this bridge. I know it's I know some people criticize it because it's freaking huge, which admittedly, yeah, it is. But it's it's the Odyssey class or rather the, the Yorktown class, which, you know, they're kind of interchangeable. But it's supposed to reflect the massive size of that ship, which makes sense. And just more than that, you know, I love the uh, the aesthetic created for this new Federation interior kit. You know, the, the really like light wall panels uh along the uh the ceiling and on the walls and the um you know shade you know touched up with like the darker areas along here and then just like the red on the carpet and then like the wood uh on like some of the railings yeah this is a great map i love it so much and the red chairs too look at that this is, they just stand out so nicely and one of the things i really love the is the uh the drop down screen that kind of comes down from the, the ceiling also not to mention the fact that my name's on it but yeah, I've talked about that enough, more than enough times. But yeah, smash, 100% smash. When can I have it on my ship, please? <laughs> this is the part where Tumor Boy rolls his eyes if he's watching. <laughs> ESD, this is another smash because ESD is a gorgeous place in uh, in the game because, I mean, this is exactly what I expect, like a normal, like up-to-date Federation space station to look like because like it's got like all these like classic like Starfleet amenities that you'd expect because like Starfleet is never meant to look like you know your typical military in installation it's got like a lot of creature comforts when you you see a lot of that in like you know like the little waterfalls under the uh under these little ramps and the uh all the foliage around the gigantic windows that give these like huge like wonderful views both inside of the station and out because like here we get to see the inside of uh the, uh, the space dock with, you know, you can see a bunch of ships in there, which, I mean, that's always cool to see. And then you go to the other side of it, you, got, you see Quinn's massive office, you got this cool holographic display over here, we got, you know, Captain Akira Sulu over here, so we can finally answer the, the age-old Star Trek Online question of where's Sulu? He's right there. Uh, and then I don't have a picture of it in this for this, but if you look at the other side, you see Earth and you see ships flying by the window. It's, it's just a cool area to see, and it's like, it, it's a great first impression, I think, to new players about what you're going to see in Star Trek Online, because I feel like this is just like a great introduction to the game, not to mention the fact that, you know, 
the uh, the tutorial is gonna do that great too. But this is just like welcome to Star Trek Online. But yeah, it's it's fantastic. Smash. Oh. Okay, yeah, this is gonna be more of a pass. <laughs> the uh, the fleet uh, starbase for the Federation. This is an area that has not aged well. Uh, it's well, from the the glaring lights. It's like a freaking J.J. Abrams movie. Just looking at this place, and it's so blue. Like everything is blue. All, every, uh, like all the things are blue, <laughs> and it's it's not it's not good. Uh, it's. It's kind of like stepping back in time in Star Trek Online almost, because this is a, like what a lot of the game used to look like, especially on like the Federation side. But the aesthetic for Stowe has really evolved into something that I feel is a lot more faithful to the IP. And this uh, this is kind of what the game used to look like. And I wish it would be updated, but I know that's a huge ask and it's probably never going to happen. But yeah, this is uh, this is a pass. Ooh, the Galaxy Class Bridge, definite smash. This, I mean, this is one of this is one of the best looking bridges in the game, especially one of the one of the best looking ones that you can use on your own ship as well too. You, there aren't a lot of those. I would say there's a lot of those in the game, but a lot of them aren't really like up to modern standards uh, anymore. But this is just a fantastic bridge and honestly you all should buy more of the bridges so <laughs> uh maybe cryptic will start changing their minds and actually uh make more uh, interior bridges because that's the why they don't make more of them they don't sell very well <laughs> that's on you guys i probably shouldn't be blaming my audience for things but you know what there there it is <laughs> um but yeah this is a gorgeous area uh, and again, more points for the fact that this is a full ship interior, so you can go to Ten Four, you can go to Engineering, you can go to other uh, areas from the next generation, and it's just—it's so cool to see, and it's so like wonderfully recreated. It looks great. I just smacked my table. That was great. Anyway, moving on. Oh, Jupiter Station. Okay, this is another example of that uh, new updated Federation interior. Again, I love just like the light walls gives sort of like a, almost like a TMP era uh, impression, but it's like a, it's a lot lighter and, but like the splash of color really gives more of a modern look to it. I, I, I don't know. I'm not great at describing this stuff, but yeah, again, like the light colors, the, the, um, the splash of color, the uh, the wood paneling on the railings, you know, touched with all the, um, you know, you got like, the, you know, this would normally be like an L-Cars display, but it's just not lit up right now. And just, it, it's cool. It looks fantastic. And I love it so much. Like here is like a, um, this is another part of Jupiter Station. This is like a, like a mess hall kind of thing or a lounge, I guess. Yeah, you know, this is during the, uh, the Terran Empire attack. So everything's kind of disheveled. You can see uh, blaster marks over here. I've turned off the fires, but you know, I can't turn off everything. But yeah, this is a gorgeous map, and I I can't wait to see more of it used in Star Trek Online, frankly, because it's just it's absolutely gorgeous. Should move on before I keep babbling. <laughs> anyway, Smash. Oh, okay. This is more. This isn't Jupiter Station. I don't know why I labeled this Jupiter Station. This is that like that secret Starfleet intelligence base. But anyway, this is still part of like the uh, the Starfleet uh, interior kit and yeah it's yeah smash still smash oh boy uh remember when i was talking about going back in time in star trek online with the uh, fleet starbase this is uh this is k7 this is basically what most of the game used to look like it was just these big open gray rooms <laughs> yeah this is yeah if you if you've ever wanted to feel like, you know, go if you ever wanted to see what Star Trek looked like back during launch, I feel like this is a good place to kind of get a glimpse of some of that because yeah, K7 has not changed much over the years. Pass. Honestly, I really wish they would kind of take some of the assets from the uh, the K the K13 base and kind of reorient that into K7 cuz K7 is from the original series and while it's, you know, a Starfleet, base that, a Starfleet base that's still in operation today, clearly. But you would, you know, obviously they would update it with more modern technology. I, th I still think they could kind of, it would be interesting to see them kind of blend some of like the TOS aesthetic, but then like put some of like the modern uh, TNG era or post TNG era stuff to kind of supplement the area to show like this is a, an old station that's being upgraded over time. I think that would be a cool idea, but. Then again, there's not much reason to do it because, I mean, 
there's, there's nothing really takes place at K7. So that would be, you know, fingers crossed on that one. But I doubt it'll, it'll I doubt they'll have time to do that one unless they suddenly have a new storyline that takes place all on K7. Ah, see, this is what I'm talking about. This is K13. This was, uh, this is a, yeah, very, very TOS looking. And I feel like it's like stepping into the past almost because like not only is this recreating one of the old shows, this is creating the original series. And it's just, it's, it's kind of almost kind of bizarre to step into in, in the game because it's just, I don't know, man. It's like, it's almost like stepping into another world inside of another world because you're already like in the world of Star Trek, but now you're stepping into two hours later. Yeah, definite smash. The KDF Fleet Starbase. Okay, this one, this one's aged a lot better than the uh, than the Federation Starbase, I think, because I mean, it still looks distinctly Klingon. It's got a lot of these cool features on it. Like, I love, I love this staircase that's like framed by the two gigantic batleths. <laughs> I don't know why, but I think that's just really cool looking, even if it is kind of ridiculous and probably a safety hazard. But I feel like there's plenty of other things that are a safety hazard on a Klingon Starbase because Klingons. But yeah, it's just, it's a cool area. Like, I wish it was a little better lit, but other than that, like, there's some cool areas in here. This map, definitely a smash. Mmm, Klingon Academy gonna be more of a pass, just because, I don't know, compared to Starfleet Academy, I feel like this is very basic looking, and, like, all the ancient, like, all this, like, the ancient stonework and stuff, honestly, it feels almost like something more out of Neverwinter than Star Trek Online, which I guess that was kind of the vibe they were going for, because you can easily kind of blend in some like you know medieval fantasy uh, aesthetic into the klingon stuff and i feel like it works for them but it's just like it's i don't feel like i'm in the future when i'm in this i don't feel like i'm out in space in this map i feel like i've gone back in time which i guess i can see why a lot of people would find that interesting but oh it's not it's not for me Kobali Prime. Honestly, this one is a smash to me because I mean, it's just it's an impressive area. I mean, it's it's it still looks pretty good um, even in, uh, today, even despite the fact this has been out since what Delta Rising, a little bit after Delta Rising. So yeah, it's it's a fairly old area at this point of the game, but it's held up pretty well and it's huge. There's a lot to do here. Honestly, I feel like people don't give this one enough credit because it's it's an it's an interesting area. It's something you can kind of just turn your brain off and just kind of explore around. And I think that's kind of cool. The Krenum Research Station. Honestly, this one is another smash. This, this is another area. The aesthetic holds up really well. You really feel like you're just on a Krenum ship. You know, you don't get to see much of that explored because you only see like, you know, from the show at least, you don't get to see much of that explored because all you get to really see is like, you know, some areas within Anorax's ship. But, you know, Stowe did a really great job of taking what little of that we saw and then just developing it into like whole areas. And this is really, really a cool area. You know, there's other parts of this too. Like there's other workstations. All this stuff feels like, you know, it's they're doing something here. They're researching stuff here with all this equipment. And yeah, it's, it really gives an actual research station vibe. So yeah, smash. However, I still want to know what the heck these freaking tube things do. <laughs> I've asked Tuberboy about this before, and he literally just said, it's like, oh, it's just like one of those things designed to look like something, even though it doesn't really do something. And it's just meant to give the aesthetic of something's going on back there. But there's just like floppy tubes that go back on this conveyor belt. And I just, I want, to, I need to know. These things haunt my dreams. What are they? What do you do? <laughs> still smash. <laughs> Uh, Mirror Viger, or uh, I should say the other, but it's it's Mirror Viger. But yeah, this was a gorgeous area. I mean, that's kind of to be expected in this day and age because this is a very recent uh, addition to Star Trek Online. But you know, I mean, I could say, yeah, I, I say it's to be expected, but it really it just goes to show you like just the amount of like dedication the uh, the Stowe art team goes to like really creating the aesthetic for Star Trek into this game because, oh, it's so, it's so gorgeous because like you, this is so visually striking too. You see this platform behind this uh, this big light source, and it's oh, I love it so much. This is this was such. I remember doing this episode for the first time, and you know, I <laughs> honestly I griped and moaned about the fact that I was having to play the Inquisitor because I really hate having to play the Inquisitor. I, I I work hard on my build. I don't like my build being taken away from me, but still, oh, this area though, it's so gorgeous, and I love it. 
<laughs> New Romulus. Again, this is another one that I think that has held up surprisingly well over the years, and just because of its impressive scale. There's a there's a bunch of stuff to do here, and even then, it's honestly I find it fun to just kind of walk around here and just explore. Because even even in this day and age, I'm still sometimes finding stuff that I did not know was here, which is impressive given the fact that I have been playing this game since before New Romulus existed. <laughs> But yeah, it's, um, ugh, I do love this area. It's just, it's fun to explore around. And also, I do love the fact that they added the, uh, the Leonard Nimoy tribute statue over here as well as on Vulcan. But yeah, new, the new, Ro new Romulus, it's, it's, it's a really great area. And I do love just, like, kind of expanding on the whole Romulus, Romulan aesthetic, you know, beyond just, uh, the, the Star Empire. Yeah, it's, uh. It's something I like to see. Just I, I'm, I, I mean, it's just I'm a big fan of the Romulans. The Romulans, the Romulans were always like a big favorite villain throughout uh, Star Trek, and uh, it, it's it's fun to see them explored more. And I wish we'd get more of that. Even though we've kind of already gotten a good amount of that with Star Trek Picard, I want more, more Romulans, please. <laughs> Yeah, again, New Romulus Command, I, yeah, great looking map. I love it so much. And honestly, of all the home base maps, this one's one of my favorites just because you know, I love the layout of it. It's just, it's very, it's smaller and more compact. I don't have to run like, you know, a mile away to go find something. You know, the uh, exchange and the um, the mail and the, um, the bank are all like right along here in the center area. And then the veteran deal refiner is right over here. Yeah, every, all, all the conveniences are like right here where you beam into. And I like that. And I wish more would be like that. But I get why they don't do that. But yeah, it's it does make this one of my favorite areas that and plus, like I said, I do love the Romulan Republic aesthetic. It's ooh, it's so nice. This is the shuttle bay, too, though uh, <laughs> points off for the shuttle bay, because I'm pretty sure this is just reusing assets from the fleet embassy. <laughs> it's just the same room, which I get. I mean, Star Trek's no stranger to that, both in Stowe and in the in the uh, the shows themselves. So I, I shouldn't uh, yeah, I shouldn't talk down on that too much. But I just, I thought it's very clearly just the same shuttle bay <laughs> with a few additional like they just added like this console in here and a few other things. Yeah, I'm pretty sure about that. If I'm wrong, I'm going to be really embarrassed, though. <laughs> um, Nukara Prime. On it. This one's this one's a pass. I mean, Nukara, it serves its function. It's it's meant to look very dark and dreary and kind of, you know, just it, this is how it's supposed to look. It's supposed to be this like scary, intimidating place, which is why you've got to wear the environment suit, because otherwise you will die without it. And it really gives that impression. But yeah, I don't want to smash it because it's going to burn something. The Odyssey Bridge. This one's still a smash. I know this was this is still a very popular bridge. There are I mean, there are some things I don't think have aged too well with this. Because honestly, I used to love this feature, but honestly, I'm not as big a fan of the transporter pad in the back of the bridge. Just like what we know about transporter rooms, it's just it's it's kind of weird to have one on the bridge, you know? Because <laughs> like, what's the point of it? What's the point of having one here on the bridge? But then what's the point of all the other transporter rooms at that point? And also, there's also the fact that, uh, you know, a transporter room here would is typically used for like, oh, we're going to be going on a uh, on a way team, so let's all gather around and uh, get our stuff ready. Where are they keeping their stuff? I see no like uh, storage areas where they could ke be keeping a bunch of phasers and tricorders and whatever. So what's the point of having this on the bridge other than you know giving uh, enemies an easy point to lock onto to beam intruders onto? <laughs> Another thing I kind of look at with more. Eh, these days is uh, the uh, holographic L cars displays. Yeah, they were kind of cool back in the day, but these days it's it's basically a 3D rendering of what is still a 2D image. So I don't really get what the point of it is. And I I think Tumor Boy said the same thing too when he was uh, making the uh, the revamped Enterprise F bridge, and that's why he used you know, the normal uh, display consoles uh, on that bridge instead of these. And yeah, I'm very much in agreement with him on that. It's just like. The, the holographic displays really don't serve much of a purpose unless you're actually using an actual 3D image, which these aren't. Also, remember when Star Trek Picard came out and everyone was yelling about how the Stargazer didn't have carpeting? You know, because the TNG aesthetic must have carpeting all the time. What does this not have? 
carpeting. <laughs> Uh, honestly, I always thought that argument was very silly. I just think it's kind of funny, though, because this one gets so much praise. And I imagine a lot of people giving this map that much praise are probably a lot of the same people who were giving Star Trek Picard a lot of crap for not putting carpeting on the Stargazer. So anyway, let's move on. Smash, by the way. But yeah, moving on, the original Enterprise Bridge. Again, this is another one of those you're stepping back in time uh, areas. It just... You can't not smash. At least I can't. Maybe you can, but you know, I know more. <laughs> That's a stupid thing to say. But I, I, I do love, you know, I do love the old original series aesthetic. It's just, it's, uh, it just sets something off in my brain that I love. And yeah, very much love this map. Kronos. Okay, I'm probably gonna get uh, some crap from some of you from this, but honestly, smash. I, I actually really like Kronos. Yeah, it's huge, and finding anything on it is kind of a pain in the butt. But I like it. It's it's so, it's it just sets a wonderful aesthetic for the Klingons, and I really like it. And even though it's kind of a pain in the butt to traverse, it looks really great. I really love this area. One thing I will uh, say though is that I do. It, it's. It really removes some of the immersion, though, that because they've had to clear out a lot of the NPCs for stability reasons, which sucks because you now it just feels like a big empty city, which is kind of it's almost creepy, you know, and yeah. But beyond that, this is a gorgeous area and I do love it. I know some of it is still looking a little like this back area, still looking a bit aged, but it's still like. I do like it. Like this area, the High Council Chambers in particular are probably like one of the best looking areas of this, which I guess that makes sense because you see this used in a number of times in story missions and also it's the High, it's, it's the high Council's uh, Chamber, it should look good. And uh, though I will call out something weird, nothing about the uh, environment, but why is why is Jimpak here, but also Laurel and, uh, <laughs> and Jaula? Why, why have they not killed each other? <laughs> Uh, anyway, that might be just something to do with the fact that how far this character has progressed in the storyline, because I don't actually remember how far that one's progressed through. But anyway, Smash. Uh, the Chrono Shipyard. It's, uh, the thing I like about the Chrono Shipyard is that it's not part of like the actual like home base. This is like a separate area, which I feel like makes sense for a shipyard. I with with esd i would get like it makes sense for it to be on esd the shipyard or where it is just for convenience sake but i always felt it was kind of weird that it was just like an office off in like this little area instead of being like an actual space station on its own where ships would dock and probably be repaired or re retrofitted or whatever you know i just it, it 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 just works better in my brain it for the for what the klingons did than what they did on esd so honestly, yeah, honestly, I do love this area. The gigantic windows, you get to see the Klingon ships outside the window. I really wish those were a little more high poly, but this really goes to show you the Bortosk really needs a revamp. <laughs> but yeah, smash. Ryza. Okay, who doesn't love Ryza? Anytime the summer event comes along, it's always fun to see. There's just a bunch of silly stuff to do. You, you get to see this little, little tropical paradise and it's just, it's fun. It's, it's Ryza. Who doesn't love Ryza? Yeah, definite smash. Because, I mean, again, this is another one, it's very old, but I do love that they keep updating it little by little each year. They always add a little something new each time. Uh, though, there are some issues with the map still. Uh, I guess that's one of the troubles of being able to fly all over the place. You really get to see some of the issues that crop up. But overall, smash, but um, yeah, there's, there's some, there's some uh, stuff going on here. Classic Ryza. <laughs> Honestly, I'm gonna say pass on this one just because, I mean, it looks pretty good. It's held up pre reasonably well over the years, but it's just, what's the point of it? Because like, you know, with the uh, with with the summer event Ryza map, like, there's not much purpose to this map because the summer event map is up year round now. So, oh, there's just, there's nothing to do here. It looks nice, but I mean. It doesn't look any nicer than the uh, the Summer Ryza map, so I don't, I don't understand what the point of this one is. So yeah, honestly, pass. 
the Romulan embassy. Okay, what I was saying about how much I like the uh, the Romulan uh, aesthetic in Stowe, um, honestly, this one's gonna be a pass just because this one this one didn't really age well. It's big, it's empty, and really, it's the other areas that I think drag it down because like this is like the command center area of the embassy, and it has not aged well. There's a lot of like a lot of light glares, and these these uh, displays look very generic. I feel like. If they could like go in and just like replace a lot of these uh, displays with like more modern Elkar's look, I feel like that would really um, help out with this. I don't know. I don't want to poop on it too much, but yeah, it's, it's not not an area I like. And this is the shuttle bay for it. You can see what I was saying about how I'm pretty sure <laughs> New Romulus just kind of reused this map and uh, touched it up a bit for. Uh, the uh the home base map but yeah honestly this is though admittedly this is probably the best looking part of the embassy though is the uh the shuttle bay you get some good natural light in there if you've got the um what is it the one project that like opens up the sunroof uh plus it's always cool to see ships just sitting there doing stuff yeah you know, even if they're just you know shuttles that don't do anything i like that but yeah overall pass on the embassy the Spire. Ugh. Honestly, remember what I was saying about the Delta Quadrant Command? Um, honestly, this one isn't as bad, but it's still kind of the same issue of it's just a big... It's a lot of gray with purple lights. <laughs> and uh, those lights haven't really uh, adapted well to 2409. And uh, those uh, those lights haven't really adapted well to lighting 2.0. Uh, uh, honestly, that's going to be a pass. Ooh. Uh, talk about traveling back in time. Uh, Starbase 39 Sierra. This is another one of those where if you really want to see uh, what Stowe used to look like, this is a good place to do it. Remember these wall hangings? These uh, uh, these gold wall hangings that were basically like, I think they were like some of Star Trek Line's concept art. And they just like put this weird like gold filter over it. Some of these each even featured ships that aren't in the game. Like, I'm pretty sure this was like a variant of the Sovereign that was never finalized and the, or was like readapted or readapted into, um, what was it called? The, the I don't remember, but <laughs> yeah, I don't think this actual ship is in the game beyond this, you know, little art piece sitting on the wall. But yeah, this is the Starbase 39 Sierra. It's, uh, it's, it's there. <laughs> uh, yeah, pass. Yeah. Oh, this is uh, another part of uh, Thernan Sierra. This is Admiral Tenet's office. Yeah, it's, it's so basic looking. Yeah. Pass. Starfleet Academy. Okay, this one, this one I do like. I do like this area. Um, I do feel like the lighting is a little intense. Like it kind of washes out some of the color of the area. But overall, this is a really cool looking place. They've updated it a bit. Um, like some of the interiors have been updated, uh, which I do appreciate. It really does look a lot better than it used to. And yeah, this is this is a cool area. Smash. <laughs> the tutorial bridge. This is I imagine this is where a lot of people are going to be commenting. When do we get access to this bridge and, uh, for our ships? And uh, I'm, I'm with you, but I know that's not a that's not always an easy conversion to make. <laughs> but yeah, 100 percent smash. This one was um, I think this was um, Donnie Versage's uh, last project before he left Cryptic. This looks so gorgeous. Donnie, we miss you. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, this is 100% smash. Oh, speaking about the gorgeous bridges, the Voyager Bridge. This one, uh, this one's held up pretty well too. Um, okay, a uh, little bit of a uh, confession here. This is actually a uh, a screenshot from one of the story missions. So this isn't the actual player bridge. Uh, the player bridge. Uh, the lighting's a little wonky, and the uh, the seating for some of the uh, the NPCs is a little wonky. Some of them are you know embedded into the ground. But overall, this map has honestly the fact that they're using it, they're still using it in some of the story missions, though. It really shows how well it's held up, though, because all they've done is like tweak some of the lighting in um, uh, for the story missions and compared to what it was in the. Uh, in the player bridge. Yeah, it really goes to show you how well this one's held up. And also for this screenshot in particular, I really did like this one just because I really like how Admiral Janeway is just kind of sitting there and be like, you better not be sitting in my chair. <laughs> I didn't notice that until after I had taken the screenshot, but it amused me, so I thought I would call it out. Vulcan. 
Vulcan, this is uh, another one that's been around very early days of the game and hasn't received much in terms of updates. But this this one holds up really well, honestly. I do love this area. You really get to see like a good amount of Vulcan. You don't get to, there's not much you get to do here in terms of like story content because there's like that one mission uh, where you go here, you pick up that ambassador. You get to explore a good amount of the uh, the map, but it's a lot bigger than uh, just that. And here's the uh, Spock Memorial for uh, Leonard Nimoy. Yeah, you know, people still gather here on the anniversary of his death to uh, remember him, which, you know, it's always goes to show you the uh, how how much we miss him in the Trek community. Here we got uh, more of the map. Like this is a decent sized map. You can there's there's a good amount to explore here, and it's just it's it's really cool to see just how well it fits. You know, just the actual Vulcan aesthetic, especially given how old this map is. It's yeah, Smash. This is a great map. I say Smash. I should, I should probably say Ponfar for this one. <laughs> There you have it, Smash or Pass Ground Maps Edition. I'm sure plenty of you are asking, is he saying th these are maps he wants to smash on, or is he actually wanting to smash the maps themselves? I'm gonna let you guys answer that for yourselves because it's funnier that way. <laughs> be sure to comment down below what your favorite map in Star Trek Online is. I'd really be interested in hearing about what you guys like to explore or just hang out in Insto. Uh, while you're down there, be sure to hit like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. If you'd like to further support the channel, you can hit that join button, become a member, or you can hit the super thanks button, or you can find the link to the merch store down in the video's description. Either way, thank you so much for watching. My name's Stu, and I will see you guys next time.